so far to Harbor Wolf. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our sand. The Saturn V rocket is, to this day, the single most powerful rocket ever developed and flown. In addition to the Apollo moon missions, the Saturn V also delivered Skylab into orbit, NASA's first effort at a permanently crewed space station. Many of us know the iconic image of this titanic black and white giant firing into the sky, but the details of how the rest of it worked remain murky to many people. So today, we're going to use Kerbal Space Program to illustrate the full process of the Apollo 11 mission, from liftoff to splashdown. Strap in, everyone. Seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. At T minus 8 seconds, the S 1C, the first stage of the Saturn V, ignites its five F 1 engines producing nearly 8 million pounds of thrust beneath the rocket as it's still attached to the umbilical tower. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff, 32 minutes past the hour, liftoff on Apollo 11. At range 0, all of the umbilical tower's hold down arms are released, swinging away from the rocket to avoid collisions. The massive size of the rocket causes it to take a full 8 seconds to rise clear of the umbilical tower. At 13 seconds into the launch, the rocket performs a pitch and roll maneuver. This uses gravity to assist the rocket onto the correct heading toward its intended orbit. Tiny adjustments are made for approximately 18 seconds, after which aerodynamic forces and gravity will do the rest. One minute into flight, the vehicle reaches Mach 1. 767 miles per hour or 1,235 kilometers an hour. A vapor cone can be seen forming around the rocket from the intense speeds. Two minutes and 15 seconds into the launch, the center F1 engine cuts off, and 25 seconds later, the remaining four are also cut off after carrying the rocket roughly 42 miles into the sky. At this time, the astronauts aboard have felt the highest amount of inertial acceleration, just under 4 Gs. One second after cutoff, the first stage separates from the rest of the rocket, and the second stage ignites. Fifteen seconds into the second stage flight, the launch escape tower is jettisoned. This tower is designed to pull the command module away from the rest of the rocket in the case of an emergency, but at this altitude, it's no longer useful. The second stage continues to burn until nine minutes into the flight. Shortly before it cuts off, the first stage will have impacted the ocean. It does so in several pieces, as it's tail heavy and traveling very fast, and thus will be ripped to pieces on its way to splashdown. Following this, the second stage cuts off at 9 minutes and 8 seconds, and is separated from the remainder of the rocket. The third stage fires 3 seconds later, carrying the rocket into a parking orbit of about 191 kilometers. At 11 minutes 39 seconds, the third stage cuts off and the craft is now safely falling above the Earth. It remains here until 2 hours and 34 minutes post-launch, at which point the third stage reignites and performs a precise burn to put the spacecraft on a trajectory to intercept the moon. The spacecraft then spends several minutes reorienting itself, finding the best position to perform one of the more tricky parts of the launch. At 3 hours 17 minutes, the command service module separates from the third stage, turns itself around, and docks itself to the lunar module. We've got the high gain uh, locked on now, I believe, auto tracking now. Okay, you're coming in uh, loud and clear, but uh, Mike is just barely readable. Uh, how is Neil? How are you reading Mike? Uh, loud and clear now, Mike, and we understand that you are docked. That's fine. Right. Uh, the spacecraft then spends the next 58 hours traveling toward the moon. During this time, several brief television transmissions are made, and Armstrong and Aldrin both enter the lunar module to inspect it for use. At hour 61 minute 39, the spacecraft reaches the equigravisphere, which is the point at which the influence of the moon's gravity is equal to that of the Earth. 
the Command and Service Module ignites its service propulsion system to place the spacecraft into a lunar orbit, burning for approximately five minutes. Four hours later, this engine would fire again to circularize the orbit, burning for less than a minute this time. At hour 95, Armstrong and Aldrin both re-enter the lunar module again, and three hours later, after its systems were checked, the module undocks from the command module. About 20 minutes later, the lunar module performs a 30-second burn to put it on a suborbital trajectory toward the surface of the moon. The lunar module descends toward the surface, reorienting itself upright at about 30,000 feet from the surface. At this time, its powered descent engine has ignited to continue slowing it down and controlling its fall toward the surface. At several points, the lunar module holds its altitude while attempting to obtain good radar data of the landing zone. Finally, at hour 102, minute 45, the lunar module touches down on the surface of the moon. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. APA at a descent. Auto descent. Auto control both auto descent and command override off. Engine arm off. Port 13 is in. We copy you down, Eagle. Okay, everybody, do you want to stand by? Do you want? Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Now begin the most famous moments. Armstrong exits the lunar module, followed eventually by Aldrin. The two do examinations of the lunar surface, collect samples, take photographs, plant their flag and read their plaque, and deploy several remote experiments on the ground. Twenty hours later, the lunar module lifts off from the surface, leaving its descent stage behind. It makes several small burns to both put it back into orbit of the moon and arrange a rendezvous with the command module. Four hours after liftoff from the moon, the lunar module is docked to the command module again, and the two astronauts exit the lunar module, which is then jettisoned, left in orbit of the moon, as weight that was no longer needed. At hour 135, the command module's service propulsion system ignited for a three-minute burn, putting the spacecraft back on a trajectory toward Earth. This trip would take 59 hours, after which the command module separated from the service module, re-entered Earth's atmosphere, deployed its drogue chute once it became subsonic, and splashed down after a cumulative 195-hour mission. And that's that! The long, complicated, and incredibly dangerous process of launching a rocket to the moon. This process was repeated six times, not including a seventh mission that never landed but proved how dangerous the Apollo program actually was. We will never see another rocket like the Saturn V, but if today was any indication, we might see something very similar. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications. If you want to support me further, consider becoming a member or a patron or checking out my merch or my Amazon links. Thank you, and I will see you over the curve, Space Cowboys. In a fast cosmic arena. Imagine self-importance.